Today I've got a nice trig identity to show everyone, and this is due to Lagrange. It's called Lagrange's trig identity. And our goal will be to show that one plus cosine theta plus cosine two theta all the way up to cosine n theta is equal to one half plus sine of n plus half theta over two times sine of theta over two. And I'd like to point out that we should think about this one as cosine of zero theta. So we're like adding up cosine of m theta as m runs between zero and n. And that motivates maybe how you would answer this homework question after this video, which is find and prove the complementary identity with sine. Now, before we get started on this problem, maybe if you haven't subscribed, think about subscribing. It would really help the channel out. Okay, let's start looking at the solution. So let's use the fact that e to the i alpha is cosine times alpha plus i times sine alpha. So this is Euler's identity. But if we take the real part of both sides, that tells us that the real part of e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta. So that allows us to write this trigonometric function as the real part of a complex exponential function. Okay, so now let's start with the left-hand side or the top side of this identity. So I'll rewrite it as the sum as m goes from zero up to n of cosine of m times theta. But now I'll rewrite this as the sum as m goes from zero up to n of the real part of e to the i m theta by what we just noticed on the line that's right above. But next, this real part operator is linear, so that means we can factor it out of the sum. And that'll leave us with the real part of the sum as m goes from zero up to n of e to the i theta to the m power, where I used exponent rules there. But now let's look, let's look at what's inside of that summation, which I'll put a yellow box around. And notice that this thing is a finite geometric series. And we've got a standard formula for the sum of a finite geometric series, which we will use now. So this ends up being the real part of one minus e to the i theta to the n plus one, all over one minus e to the i theta. So in fact, what it is, it's one minus the common ratio to the n plus one, because here we're ending at n plus one, over one minus the common ratio. Our common ratio here is e to the i theta. Okay, but now let's maybe put this back together into a e to the i n plus one times theta using exponent rules, and then we'll break this apart into trigonometric functions. So that's gonna give us the real part of, let's see, in the numerator we have one minus cosine of n plus one times theta minus i times sine n plus one times theta. So that's our numerator, where I went ahead and distributed that minus sign. And then in the denominator, we'll have one minus the cosine of theta minus i times the sine of theta. Okay, great. But now if we've got a fraction where the numerator and the denominator both include non-real imaginary numbers, it's a bit tricky to find the real part. But the trick that we can use in order to find the real part will be to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the complex conjugate of the denominator. And so maybe we'll put down here in this green box what we need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by. And that will be one minus cosine theta plus i times sine theta. And that's because, like I said, we need the complex conjugate. So we keep the real part the same, that would be this one minus cosine theta, and then we change the sine of the imaginary part from minus i sine theta to plus i sine theta. Okay, so now let's move up to the top of the next board where we've multiplied that out. So after expanding out everything that we had on the last board, we end up with this inside of the numerator of our real part. 
So there's quite a bit going on. We have one minus cosine theta, minus cosine of n plus one theta, minus plus cosine theta times cosine n plus one theta, minus sine theta times sine n plus one theta, and then there's more. But luckily, everything else is attached to our imaginary number i. So I'll just write that as plus i times a bunch of stuff. And we don't care what that stuff is because we're about to take the real part. And of course, if we take the real part, we don't care about the imaginary part. And then after multiplying by the conjugate of the denominator, our denominator will only have a real part. That was the whole point. So we have two minus two cosine theta in the denominator. Okay, so now I'd like to notice that we have one minus cosine theta, two minus two cosine theta. So these things that I'm underlining in blue can be combined to give us one half. So that gives us one half. And that's clearly a real number, so we can take that out of this. In fact, we might as well just scrub this real part away and then take care of this. We don't need this. So I'll just put a star there. We don't need that. Okay, then after taking this one half out, which was uh, built by those two blue underlying things, let's see what we have left over. So we'll have plus, I'm gonna rewrite this a little bit. So I'm gonna write this as cosine theta times cosine of n plus one theta. So that takes care of that term. And then we'll have minus sine of theta times sine of n plus one times theta. That takes care of our last term in the numerator. And then finally, we will have this minus cosine of n plus one times theta. Great. And then our denominator is two minus two cosine theta. But I'd like to recall that there's a nice trig identity that allows us to rewrite two minus two cosine theta as four times sine squared theta over two. So that's a power reducing formula for sine. So that's exactly what we'll do. We'll rewrite this as four times sine squared theta halves. Okay, nice. And now let's notice that this stuff that I will overline in purple looks like the output of some sort of sum formula for either sine or cosine, or maybe a difference formula. And in fact, it's a difference formula for cosine. This is in fact equal to cosine of n plus one theta minus theta. But of course, cosine of n plus one theta minus theta is just cosine of n theta. So we might as well rewrite this as cosine of n times theta. So something like that. Okay, so let's bring all of this down. So we're left with one half, and now we have plus the cosine of n theta minus the cosine of n plus one times theta, and then this is all happening over four times sine squared of theta over two. So keeping in mind what our goal is, we've taken care of the half, we have a sine theta over two, which is starting to look like what we have in the denominator over here, but not quite just yet. But we can get there by taking this first term as well as this second term and rewriting them a little bit. And here our motivation is to somehow think of these as being split equally from n plus one half times theta. So notice that this is n plus one half times theta minus theta over two. And this is n plus one half theta plus theta over two. So let's those write those right here. So we have cosine of n plus one half theta minus theta over two. And then like I said, this one right here is cosine of n plus one half times theta plus theta halves. Now we can apply a difference rule for this yellow one and a sum rule for that orange one. So let's see what that leaves us. Let's write it out carefully. So we'll have a one half plus, and now our numerator is gonna expand into four terms. That's because this difference will expand into two terms and then that sum will expand into two terms as well. So this difference expands into cosine of n plus one half 
times theta times cosine of theta over two, and then we'll have a plus sine of n plus one times theta times a sine of theta over two. So that comes from this first yellow term. So maybe let's put these in yellow parentheses so we can see where that's from. And then let's see what comes from the orange parentheses. So we'll have minus, and then I'll put a big orange parentheses from coming from those orange terms. So that'll give us the cosine of n plus one half theta times the cosine of theta over two. So that'll be the first term. And then we'll end up with minus the sine of n plus half times theta times the sine of theta over two. Two. And then this is all happening on top of four times sine squared of theta over two. Okay, so now let's see if we can cancel some things out. So we've got a cosine times a cosine minus a cosine times a cosine, and we have the same arguments. So that means this guy cancels with that guy. And then this two minus signs will cancel to a plus, and then those will double up into twice what we started with. But then we'll have this sine theta over two and this sine theta over two cancel one of these down in the end. Well, I guess I should say, wow, this whole thing doubles this guy up to a two, but then that two will cancel this four down to a two. But now it's kind of messy, but let's look at what we have. We have one half plus, the only thing left in the numerator is this sine of n plus half theta. And then the only thing left in the denominator is this two sine theta over two, which is exactly what we wanted. And that's a good place to stop.